Welcome, welcome to the Victory in Business Success and Accountability Call. I'm so happy to have all of you here. And as you know, I like to get the week started with pumping it up. All right, just a little fun there to get us going, get the energy up. Hello, Charlie. Welcome, welcome. Welcome, Dawn. It's so good to have Joy here with us too today. Just great. All right. So as you all know, I love to always start by checking in with everybody and seeing, well, today we're not going to do wins today. Today, I would like to talk about your goals to get prepared for the conference. So I want each of you just to, I'm going to start with Les, give me one major goal for you that you want to do in preparation of the upcoming conference. So Les, do you want to share with us what that would be for you? You're muted, honey. Les, you're muted. We can't hear you. We can't hear you, sorry. Could you guys hear me? I had my sound turned down, sorry. Okay, let's I, I think I'm on now. Yes. Am I, okay. Well, um, yay, happy for me. I get to start us off here. When exactly is conference? It's in like June, right? June 10th and 11th. Okay. So by then, the goal is to make sure that and I'm working on that right now, but within my Optimum 365 program, there's a lot of affiliates and, and uh, associates that I could work with to provide leads and networking with each other because I, I know they're going to have services and products that I would highly recommend. So I want to be in a position where I can really start seeking those kind of people out and building uh, an associates and affiliate networking opportunities come um, the conference. Okay, I love that. But what would be the first step you took to start that process? What is the number one thing you have to do to get ready to recruit associates and affiliates? Finish my catalog. Okay, good. So that is number one goal for you. Finish your catalog so you have something to hand people and say, here are the opportunities. This is what it looks like, right? Right. Right. Okay. Awesome. Love that. Yeah. So let's get really specific with those goals, people. Um, Daniel, do you want to share what would be the number one thing for you that you feel you need to get ready before the conference? Hmm, that's a good question. Uh, I think for me, it's it's content. Just <clears throat> keep working on putting together and pushing out content. Um, I think that's going to be the, the big thing over the next month and a half is just to have, have that. So part of that is yeah, uh, you know, uh, outline for a book. So go ahead and start um, filling in the chapters and stuff like that. I don't know that I'll have a goal to have that finished by the conference, but certainly to have a um, decent amount of that completed by the conference. So. Okay, cool. So you can start talking about it. Good. Right. Get people excited, right? Exactly. Yes. Okay, Joy, do you want to share with us what you need to do to get yourself prepped for the conference? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm starting the, the relational marketing strategy this week. Uh, so I want to do that consistently until the conference and invite people. Yes, great. Awesome. Thank you, Joy. Charlie, you're up. Uh, I would say, I, I guess, keep, can, keep developing content. The other thing I need to check on a meeting with Rob on Friday is I know the booth uh spots are limited so i haven't got confirmation so i need to do the whole banner thing and um and some handouts i guess too um yes right uh, yeah. and remember if you guys need your banners um well don actually has a good contact too but tommy is our man and he gives us some great price prices and he's fast and his service is good 
So reach out to him. If you don't have his contact information, let me know. I'll send that to you. And Charlie, yes, just confirm that your booth is confirmed. And I want to take a moment here to congratulate Charlie because he will be featured in our new magazine. He has an advertorial coming. So we're excited to see that. And uh, it's actually the title is on the cover page. So good job, Charlie. Awesome. So excited for that. Yeah, it's going to be so beautiful. Love it. Um, Mythica, do you want to share what you need to do for the conference to get yourself prepped, your number one goal? Um, my number one goal is uh, to make sure that all of my products, services, and things that um, I want are streamlined. Because right now it's all kind of scattered. It's like, Hi, I have organized over here. Hi, I have body painting over here. Hi, I have, I have coaching over here. Hi, I have speaking over here. And all of these things are in separate boxes. Gosh. And, and so my, my job before the conference is to have uh, something that makes sense that streams line, streamlines all of them under the uh, <laughs> Sorry. I was listening. I was just listening. Uh, so oh, that, okay. that basically everything is under the neon Buddha brand, but it's done in such a way that makes sense. Because right now it's just like, well, yeah, the, this thing is in here and that thing is in here. And, and all of those things are great things, but yeah, they yeah. need to have, there needs to be a, some sort of co cohesive glue that fits it all together. Yeah. And that actually, makes sense and is easy to explain because that's been my biggest thing. So like when people are like, so Mythica, what do you do? I'm like, uh, a lot of things. Right. And so <laughs> and then I, people I, lose, lose interest after I've talked about the second or third thing. So I know I have that same problem. And actually what I was doing Mythica is I have an idea for you and now I can't remember what it's called. And I have, um, something tree link tree link tree do you know about link tree no okay. so link tree is a service it's free where you can go and you list all your services under the link tree and it gives you a qr code where people can just scan the qr code and then each link is linked to your separate services so you you need to have it of course laid out so that you can link those links to where you want them to go, but you can structure your link tree, um, maybe from your high ticket offer all the way down to your lowest or just whatever makes sense along the way. Is everyone here familiar with link tree? If, yeah, if you've never seen it, go check it out. It's actually pretty neat. It's just a way to kind of bring everything that you do together and people can find it all in one easy place. Cool. Thank you. Awesome. You're welcome. That's why I was trying to look it up because I couldn't remember what it was. And then I hit play. <laughs> awesome. Fantastic. Thank you, Mythica. Uh, wonderful. Uh, Dawn, hello, my lovely. Hello. Hello. Baby okay. girl, you want to share with us what's your number one goal for getting yourself ready for the conference? Uh, honestly, the only thing I need to do before conference is get myself to Texas. That's really the only thing I've not had any time at all to prepare for conference. So I know it's an excuse, but time has been very limited and we've been busy working on the retreat and stuff. So yes. you're going to have to give me a pass on this one, Vanessa. <laughs> you have a pass, girl. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> Don's been working really hard uh, with me, if I may share with you guys our retreat launched today, our promotion for the retreat launch today we're very excited we have a two-day retreat coming up in june the weekend after the conference and you'll see more about that as we go along if you have any questions let me know and or don jeff hello hello vanessa and everyone good to see you all i am pretty much in the same predicament as mythica out of the four things that i need to do i'm going to try to narrow it down to one like you asked so i need to get my catalog put together and put um all of my services 
I, I guess all of my services. I, I, I'm kind of concerned about spreading myself too thin and saying I have this to offer, this to offer, this to offer, this to offer. And I know that it's most it, it's most likely better to kind of pare it down to two or three things. I mean, what, what do you think? I mean, is is less better in this case? I would say so, Jeff. My advice would be, and if anyone else has ideas for Jeff, would be to kiss, kiss, choose one core offer that you would like to make at the conference. Have the availability, have the materials for all your programs on your table, but feature one so that you don't confuse people. Um, the one that you think will draw people to your most, to your table, to come and talk to you. And then when you're having the conversations, you can always, um, if you detect that they need one of your other services, you can always just throw it out there. But have, have flyers, have information for everything, but focus on one core offer that you feature. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. the catalog might be a little different. In the catalog, you can probably put all your services, but also make sure they're organized in a way that's not confusing. So if you need help with that, let me know. I can mm. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else have any ideas for Jeff about that? Agree? Everyone agrees? Cool. Okay. Suzanne, hi, darling. <laughs> Hello, oh, hi there. Um, yeah, I have um, I have a couple options. I have um, the catalog. I'm kind of putting a question mark because I have a brochure, and I I know you saw that one uh, for brides, but we have a generic one, so I want to get it up to speed. We have an online program also that we can do, and then I have a PDF for that program. Um, so it's for body confidence and dealing with, you know, just all this, stress, all this stuff. your weight and your body image. So I'm going to probably have that as my, one of my promotions is along with our center where people can get a special maybe for the summer, you know, like they come in and they feel great because they can look good in their swimsuit or something, you know, that's kind of where I'm going. Great, great. So for, thank you, Suzanne. For most of us, it's marketing materials and getting organized. Um, Daniel said... Um, yeah, I have that on my brochure. I have a QR code. Good, good, good. Yeah. Really I'll, I'll check and see if it links to my... I have a, a one pager on my website that's really for this program, and I need to get that a little more refined. Okay. Awesome. Wonderful, you guys. Now, I want to remind you, it's all very good and well if you have all these things ready. But if you have no one to show it to, that doesn't help much either. So I do want to encourage you guys, um, enjoy, give you A plus for <laughs> invite, 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 invite your people, invite your friends. They get to come for free as your VIP guests. And what I always urge you guys to do is, yes, invite them to the Achieve Conference, but invite them to come and see you, come and see your business. Charlie, when you invite people, say to them, hey, come see me at this conference. I'm going to be exhibiting or I'm going to be at this conference featuring my stuff. Um, we are, our goal with the conference is not just to grow Achieve but to give you a larger platform to give you more credibility for your community, your prospects, your people. So they can see, oh my gosh, look, you're huge. You're part of this big thing. So make use of that. Tell your people to come and see you. And in, in, the, in the process, they get to see everyone else and what Achieve is about and, 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 right? So really, really use the conference as a platform to promote yourself and your business. And so this is actually a great little segue into what I want to talk about today. Um, before I go into my spiel, are there any questions for me? Anyone stuck on anything or have a question about the conference or about anything else? No, we're good. All right. So, um, you guys know I'm all about showing up. You know, I'm all about showing up with confidence and your way of being when you show up. How are you showing up? 
And with the conference coming, I want you all to really raise your awareness about this, heighten your awareness about this. But with that said, I want to tell you about three steps, the three most important steps to make money, right, at the conference to make money at the conference or any networking event for that matter. I'm just applying it to the conference now. We are very quick to find excuses why we are not profiting, why we are not, you know, it's either, oh, well, I don't have time to market or I don't have my niche figured out or my messaging isn't right or I don't have enough leads or, it, you know, there's always something, right? We always, always think of something. The truth is, none of that needs to really be 100% in place for you to be able to make money. Can I see sparkle fingers if you agree? And I'll explain. <laughs> if you understand who you are and what you are, the results you are giving people, those are the two only things you really need to know to start making sales, right? What are the results you are getting? What are you helping people with? And then how do you want people to perceive you? How do you want people to feel around you? How do you want people to feel when you talk to them, right? Those are the two main things. And then there are three things there are only three things that you need to do. Number one, talk to as many people as you can. Number two, let them know what you do. Yes, of course, you're going to listen. You're going to ask questions. You're going to inquire. But just tell them what you do. And number three, if the opportunity presents itself, let them know how you can help them. Right. So those three things, talk to as many people as you can, tell them what you do. And then if the opportunity presents itself, tell them how you can help them make an offer. OK, if we don't make offers. No one's got anything to sign up for. Right. If they don't know you have something to offer, they're not going to buy. So you have to offer, of course, guys. The main concern is always being salesy, right? Sounding like I just want to push my stuff. Here's the deal. If you are you and you believe in your product slash service and you are not attached to the outcome, there is no way you're going to come across salesy or pushy, right? Being attached to making that sale being attached to finding new clients, being attached, if you are just having a conversation and in the conversation, you talk about what you're passionate about. And then in that conversation, you tell people how you can help them. How are you being salesy? Because you know what? If you're okay with them walking away without buying from you, that is what you want. Now, how do we get to that mindset? Because I know some of us are sometimes a little desperate. The bills have got to get paid. The things have got to be, get bought. We have to, there are things we have to pay for. But the thing is, if you keep filling your pipeline with people, meaning talking to person after person after person, then there will definitely be someone or many people to engage in what you do. And yes, you're going to talk to a lot of people who are not your ideal client or your ideal prospect, but that's the point. The point is that we're not out there looking for clients. We are out there attracting our ideal clients. Does that make sense? And in the attracting comes from your way of being. And our natural way of being is being giving. And when we give, we receive. So we don't really need all the processes and the niches and the everything else if 
we talk to as many people as possible and we come to the conversation with a giving spirit. Any thoughts about that? Anyone want to add something? I have one more analogy I want to share, but did that spark any thoughts for anybody or any questions? Yes, Daniel. So um, love that. Totally agree with you. The attachment to the outcome is such a, a big deal, you know, especially for um, small business owners, entrepreneurs or whatever. It's uh, always wondering, you know, depending on how we're showing up and, and what we what we need, right? And I think that's where we get stuck sometimes. Um, you mentioned uh, when the opportunity presents itself, making the offer. So I just was curious, like, to me, that's always, it's almost like, a, <laughs> you remember that movie, What Do Women Want? You know, it's kind of right. like, what do business owners want? Or how do I know that they're open to an offer? So I was just curious if you could expand a little bit on what you mean by if the opportunity presents, how a sign uh sure sure so language, really whatever. It's, it's simple daniel um when you are in that conversation i think it's really important that we and and you those of you show up at leela's call frequently you know she always talks about visioning and about future costing so in our conversation we always want to open up dreams desires we want to ask people what is it that they want what is it that they feel they need and if that need coincides with your service, that is your opportunity to make the offer. That is when you go, you know what? If you're open to it, I have just the thing that can help you with that, right? So there you're making the offer. You're saying, hey, you pose this desire to me or this problem that you're facing or this issue that you're facing, and I have the solution. And if you're open to it, I'd love to chat with you more about that. And then you can either talk about it right there and then if it feels right, or you can schedule another time to meet and say, hey, let's let's talk further because I think I, I know I can help you. And never say, I think I can help you. Always be very um, confident in what you have to offer. If you know you can help that person, tell them that. I know I can help you. Does that help? Yeah. Yeah, no, that's that's great. Okay, you're, you're welcome. You're welcome. So the little analogy I want to bring to you is, you know, one of the one of the mentors that I listened to, he mentioned this analogy, and I really loved it, because he said, one of the biggest mistakes we make as entrepreneurs, is we don't let people know exactly what we have to offer. Like, we're very vague about what we have to offer. And he said, it's like when someone comes, a stranger comes up to you in the street with a black box with just a sliver in it and you say, stick your hand into this box and whatever you grab, you can keep. It's a stranger with a black box. You don't know what's in the box. Will you put your hand in there? Probably not. Probably be like, mm -mm, this is too weird. It could be a snake, it could be a spider, it could be who knows what, right? Gross. But what if someone comes up to you with a white box, they open the lid and they shake it around and you see candy and, and, and fruit and good stuff. And you close the box and you say, now whatever you grab, you can keep. Would you put your hand on the box? Yes, you would. So I love that analogy of make visible to everybody who you are and what you do exactly so that they can put their hand in the box and pick what it is they need. If we, are, if we are not specific about our services, specific about the outcome, people don't know what they're grabbing for. And so they're not gonna grab, okay? So for the conference, really think about that. Think about, is your box the black one with all the unknowns? Or is your box the white one where people actually can see what's in there and they just need to pick what it is they want to pick out of it? All right, so that is my message for you today. And I want to encourage you again and urge you again, please go out and invite people. You know, uh, what I'm doing this week is, I might as well say what I'm doing. I'm going to my Facebook, personal Facebook page. I have a lot of connections. You know how you get friend requests and you go to their Facebook and you look that they fit and then you say, yes, I'll be your friend, but you never actually talk to them. So I'm going to go to those people that I know I chose to be 
friends on my Facebook page, but I've never really spoken to. And I'm going to reach out to them and invite them to the conference. All they can do is say yes or no. I'm available or I'm not, right? So um, do invite, invite, invite. And yes, Dawn, you focus on moving. I know you have a lot of packing to do. Uh, we are excited to actually have you at the conference, even though you're going to be in Texas. Um, so anybody have any closing comments or questions before we say goodbye for the day? We're all good. Thank you for the statement about not letting ourselves get attached to a particular outcome. Right. And You're I'm right. going to have a mantra around that. It's going to be, be okay if they walk away. <laughs> Be okay if they walk away. Yes, that is, you know, um, thank you, Jeff. Having a business and connecting with leads is a lot like dating. I know I haven't dated in a long time. Okay, very long time. But if you think about it, when you get that relationship where you have someone in the relationship that's really kind of, so maybe you go on a first date and then after the first date, you get like, eight text messages and three phone calls and they're kind of clingy and they can't wait for you to call back or text back. What does that do to that relationship? It kind of pushes you away, right? So we need to think of our leads in the same way. Yes, do follow up. Don't be clingy. Be loving, be caring, be kind. If they don't respond or don't reciprocate, Put them, don't discard them. Put them on a list somewhere where they maybe get one message from you a month or an email from you a month un until they tell you yes or no, right? But we don't want to be that creepy girlfriend or boyfriend that's kind of chasing, right? We just want to have that nice, loving, caring, giving rapport with our connections. And the ones that are attracted to what you have they will come your way. And for some of them, the timing isn't right. They might come your way in a year or two. And for others, you're not their thing. That's okay. All right. But the only time that becomes a problem is if you're only reaching out to one or two people and they're not buying because then you need them to buy, right? So the more we connect, 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 and COVID's pretty much over, we have the opportunity now to really connect with people again. Person to person is still the best. Make use of the conference. It is here for you to benefit from. Just be you. Be you confidently. Understand your services. And if you have to practice in front of the mirror how to talk about who you are or you need a sounding board, guys, I'm here. I can help you with that message. If you're not sure how to verbalize what it is you do or the outcome or the results you give, reach out to me. I'll help you with that. Okay. Awesome. Have a beautiful week. Invite, invite, invite. And write down that number one goal that you said to me today. And by next week, Monday, we will review and see where you're at. Okay. Have a beautiful week. Love you all. Thanks for being here. Thank you, everyone. Have a great week. Bye, you too.